I will be talking on financial freedom. Moving from financial slavery towards financial freedom. The relationship between man and money. I have been working in this finance and investment field for almost past 15 years. I have worked in equity and debt. I have worked in Indian and international markets. And I have also worked in research and fund management. And what I have seen over the past so many years is that there is even today in this modern world, there is a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of misconception about money, finance and investments. In the good old days, there used to be barter system. Goods and services used to be exchanged for goods and services. Then man created money as a medium of exchange, as a store of value. And over a period of time, man, the creator of money, himself became the slave of his own creation. Today, if we see, in many sense, we all have become financial slaves. Wage slave of the employer, tax slave of the government, loan slave of the bank. And it's a time that we have to come out of this financial slavery. If we see, we all are born as geniuses, but most of us die into mediocrity. And one of the important things which comes between man and his dreams in this physical world is money. Take the example of a 16-year boy, maybe some, somebody from y'all sitting over here, who is very good at playing cricket. He wants to play cricket, he wants to qualify and play for a national team. But what is the typical advice which he will get from his parents, teachers, elders? That you are not going to qualify for the cricket team. It's better you study, you become a doctor, you become an engineer and live a safe, secured life. So in the name of this safe, secured life, he is made to sacrifice his dream. And this happens with many of us. And even after all that, still people avoid or are afraid on questions relating to finance or money or investments. Take the example, if you ask, say, a housewife, that what are you planning about your financial future? A typical answer is, I don't know anything. My husband is looking at it. Or you take the example of a middle-aged person, a qualified person earning very good money, that what are you planning about your future, about your children's marriage, about your retirement? A typical answer is, I have invested in so-and-so mutual fund or taken such insurance policy. Or if you ask a young chap who has just come out of college, that what are you planning about your future, about your marriage, about your ed future education or buying a house? A normal answer is just I want to work, I want to earn money, all that I'll see in future. So there is a chance, there is a time which has come that we have to get out of this and we have to strive to achieve financial freedom. Towards that end, I had written my first book which is called 10 Commandments for Financial Freedom in which I had brought out 10 principles relating to earning, protecting, budgeting, saving, spending, investing, leveraging, rules of money and financial mistakes which I believe if anybody follows will be able to achieve financial freedom. The book has been doing very good and has been selling very well. But after that when I used to go to a lot of such seminars and talk with a lot of people, I realized that there is a section of people who read books only for entertainment or thrill purposes. So then I embarked on my second book, which is a finance fiction, which is called Mad Money Journey, in which I have combined finance and entertainment. If you see, it, in that book, it is a story of a middle-aged doctor who is very well qualified and in a very respectable position in society, earning a lot of money. He has a good family, he has a loving wife, two grown-up children, he has a mother, everything is perfect. But still somewhere he is not happy from within and somewhere even after earning a lot of money he is still financially struggling. So he goes to end his own life but he is mysteriously saved from debt and then he is launched on a financial mission around the world. He goes to different countries like US, UK, Africa, China, Afghanistan, Bangkok and many more. He meets different people over there, he stays with those people in their country, eats their food, lives their culture and learns some important principle from each one of them. And then he comes back to India and then his mission is there. Now I will just touch upon those principles. The first principle is earning money. I strongly believe God has given each one of us some special gift, some special talent. I think we all have to utilize that gift, that talent and start somewhere, start earning money. Without earning there is no future. And when we earn money, there are two kinds of earning money in very simplistic term. One is when we are working for money. For example, when we do a job or a salary, that is we are working for money. Or say we have a small business or a profession, say a doctor or lawyer, that is we are working for money. Because when my time and energy is utilized to earn money, it means we are working for money. 
while the second thing will be money working for us. For example, if you have a large business or example you have an investment say in a rental property where you get rent or in equity shares where you get dividend. So those will be examples of money working for us. Whether I am working or not, my money is working for me and I am getting my rent or my dividend or my interest or my profits. So all have to somehow, somewhere move from working for money towards making money work for ourselves. Once we earn money, there are a lot of people who are after our money. I am not talking about the thieves or ducats. I am talking about those people who legally and systematically take away money from us at all points of dealing. And the biggest of them all is government. Government takes away money from us at all points of dealing with money. Whether it is earning, whether it is investing, whether it is insuring, even when it is spending. For example, if I am doing a job, say I get 100 rupees salary, out of that around 30 rupees is tax, which is deducted at source, it is called tax deducted at source. So if I have 100 rupees, I only get 70 rupees in my pocket, 30 rupees directly goes without it never coming to my pocket. Even at the time of investing, say if you buy a property, you have to pay registration fees, stamp duty, etc. Or if you say buy invest in shares, you have to pay STT, securities transaction tax. Even at the time of spending, say if you go to a nice hotel to have a dinner, you have to pay different taxes, VAT and other taxes, sales tax, etc. Also I can see a lot of young beautiful girls over here, you all must be applying same makeup or something like that. Most of you all may not be knowing that whether you buy say a lipstick or powder or whatever, almost 20 to 30 percent of that is excise duty. If you buy 100 rupees product, almost 20 or 30 is going to the government without we realizing also. So government is one of the biggest legal financial predators. There are others also like bank is one of them, brokers are other. And so we have to learn to protect ourselves from them. After protecting from them, we have to learn to budget for our money. Today, we pay everybody. We pay government, we pay bank loan EMIs, we pay medical bills, we pay children's school fees, we pay everybody. But we forget to pay our own self. Unless we pay our own self, we are never going to achieve financial freedom. What will happen? Money will come in one hand and it will go out of another hand. So when we draw the monthly budget, our name has to be first. We have to learn to pay ourselves first. Then only there is a chance of achieving financial freedom. After budgeting, we have to know the difference between saving and investing. Most of us confuse between saving and investing. In today's time of currency and money, savers are actually losers. I'll give you an example. Say today you have 100 rupees and there is a big loaf of bread which is available at 100 rupees. Now what do you do? Today you have a choice of buying that at 100 rupees. Or say you put it in a bank FD where the rate of interest is 8%. So after one year you get 8 rupees as interest and assuming whatever is your tax, say 20 or 30 percent, after tax you will get say 6 rupees. So the 100 becomes 106. Now assuming inflation rate is 10 percent, that same bread after one year 100 rupees will cost 110. So today with my 100 rupees I was able to buy the loaf of bread. But after one year with that 106 I am not able to buy that bread which is now costing 110. So therefore we have to invest in those assets which actually benefit from inflation and give us protection from taxes. Example, one can be real estate. Over a longer term it will always benefit from inflation because the supply of land cannot be increased but currency can be increased. Also because of increase in construction cost over a longer term it will increase. Or say a commodity like gold, over longer term it will also increase because its supply also cannot increase beyond a certain point. Also there will be equity shares that will also benefit from inflation because the companies in which you invest over a period their sales will increase, productivity will increase, the prices of goods will increase, margin will expand and the profits will increase and consequently the stock price will also increase. But all, but all these don't increase in a linear manner. They are like a ECG graph. They go up, down, up, down, they are very volatile. So you have to bear this short term volatility and long term there will be gain. Then you have to also know the power of leverage. Leverage is a very powerful factor. It will actually multiply your money. Leverage will determine whether you remain a small fish in a small pond or you become a large fish in a large ocean. For example, say leverage or the leverage or otherwise it means borrowing or debt, say a cost of borrowing for me is say 10 percent and I have an asset which can give you me a return of 15 percent. So 15 minus 10, 5 percent is the money which I created because of leverage or debt. 
So if I can invest in something which can give me my return on that asset is more than my cost of capital, then I can just keep increasing, multiplying my wealth, literally I can print my own money. And that is what large corporations actually become large and print their own money over longer term. The other important factor is insurance. Insurance will help you in being in the business, what business you are in. There are different kinds of insurance like personal insurance, medical insurance, property insurance, loss of profit insurance, business insurance, etc, etc. The one important thing which I would like to state is that we should never ever combine investments with insurance. Both are totally separate thing. Insurance companies are very, very bad investment managers. And after the large expenses, they are always going to underperform. So whenever anybody takes an insurance policy, it should always be a pure insurance policy, which is a term policy. And not something like a ULIP or endowment or money back policy. Because the return on them over longer term will always be bad after the amount of high expenses which they charge. So you must always subscribe to a very cheap term policy and the remaining premium which you save, which you will save almost 95% of the premium you will save, you can create your own asset, you can in invest in your own asset class and I am sure over medium to longer term you will do much better than taking a money back or an endowment or a ULIP policy. So therefore you have to learn, we all have to learn about first recognizing our skills and starting to earn money somewhere, knowing the right sources of earning money, protecting our money from the legal financial predators, budgeting for our own self, knowing how to pay ourselves first, know then know the difference between saving and investing. You have to invest in those assets which actually benefit with inflation and give us tax protection. We have to know how to unleash the power of positive leverage to multiply our wealth and subscribe to proper insurance policy also. So once we follow all the principles, I am sure over a medium to long term, we all will be able to move from financial slavery towards financial freedom. And once we are financially free, we will be all be able to achieve our dreams. We will all be able to relive our dreams. We will all be able to achieve our higher goals, our self-actualization goals and answer the calling of our souls. Thank you.